with with all your experience, what do you think can be done? I mean, there's no right answer to this, but I think some basic things like don't be an arrogant outsider coming in. Sure. Uh, <laughs> probably applies to most factors in life, right? Uh, of course, there are arrogant astronomers out there. <laughs> We've all met them. Um, another example that I, I'm familiar with it demonstrated this. This is now in South America in Chile, okay. um, where there's a lot of observatories in the Atacama Desert in the yeah. north. And I have spent a lot of my life observing at some of these observatories and working with the people there. And some of these observatories are run by the United States and some are run by the Europeans. And they have somewhat different mechanisms for how they operate it. The, the, um, okay. the American organization, Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory, um, the people who ran it mostly lived in Chile. Okay. And they were, back in the 60s, they were a bunch of fairly geeky male astronomers <laughs> who, uh, um, who often end up marrying the local women. Sure. And that meant they were integrated into the local culture yeah. in the sense that they learnt fluent Spanish, they'd lived there for decades. Whereas the Europeans had more of an idea of flying people in for a few years and then flying them out again. Right. Um, and so it was like fly in, fly out, as yeah. like you see in mines in Australia. And this was a problem when both organisations decided in the 1980s and 90s they wanted to build newer and bigger telescopes. Okay. Um, so the European Observatory had a deal with the Chilean government, which at this time was a Pinochet dictatorship, okay. um, that said, OK, you can have this area of land up in the north, which is where the very large telescope, the VLT, was eventually built. Right. Um, whereas the Americans decided to build it a bit closer to where they were already based. OK. And the uh, Europeans got in a lot of trouble because the government had promised them this land, we can build on this land. Right. But then um, it turned out that the ownership of the land was disputed. Okay. Uh, a lawyer found a local landowner who claimed the land had been illegally taken from him by the Pinochet dictatorship and therefore right. sued them. The police burst into their offices and stopped and dragged oh uh, documents goodness. away and prevented them from proceeding. They were also not very popular with the locals because they didn't obey Chilean laws, oh, the labour wow. laws. Okay. Because they didn't have to. They got an exemption in the original agreement so they didn't have to obey Chilean labour laws. Wow. But it didn't make them very popular. Oh, understandably. <laughs> Whereas the, the Americans, I mean, they were still a fairly colonial setup. Yeah. But they, because they were more integrated into the community. And they, a part of the community. A bit more. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have the same sort of problems. In the end, yeah. both observatories got built. This was all overruled. Sure. The Europeans had to threaten to take the observatory to Namibia. Oh, my goodness. Um, and the, the, taking all the money away, the Chilean government overruled the legal action and allowed them to keep the land. But still, it wasn't good. And more recently, they've tried much harder. The Europeans now, for the ALMA telescope they've built up there, they now work very closely with the local indigenous people okay. and they do the similar sort of things to what you were talking about in Central Australia where they have, uh, they're researching the uh, local cultural knowledge sure. and they've got visitor centres that highlight this. So, okay. so I think yeah, be locals, not just people who are flying in. Yeah. The trouble is for a really desolate remote area there tend not to be many astronomers who live there. Sure. Um, so it's very hard to, uh, as observatories have gone to more and more remote places, yep. when they um, Back in the 60s, a lot of observatories were moderately remote places, but yeah. they still had towns and trees and people would live there. But now they've gone to really, like yeah. in the north of Chile, it's not rained in recorded history. Wow. Okay. Um, so that's not, no one lives there and yeah. it's, um, you can't be a local there. Yeah, okay. okay. But trying to be as local as you can be, yeah. take the time to meet and know the local communities. And their laws and cultures and customs as well. And you don't just sort of say we want an observatory, fly in and try and fast talk them into doing everything. Yeah, it's so. more of that extractive model, I think. And so for the square kilometre away in Australia, the people have been talking to the local communities and listening to them for decades, yep. literally decades. Yep. And I think that's why we're having less trouble in Australia than in South Africa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really listening yeah. and I think fundamentally, if the local indigenous community says, no, we don't want this observatory, you've just got to say, okay. Yeah. I mean, astronomy, I think it's really important, yeah. but uh, not as important as the indigenous spiritual connection to their lands. If yeah. they say no, then you just don't build the observatory. Yeah, and hopefully look for another location and astronomy will hopefully survive. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we'll pretty much leave it there. But I guess the last thing I would ask you is, is there any um, any other conclusions that you would make from kind of the stuff that we've explored in the lectures and, and your experience? Uh, I, th I think really that 
I mean, the indigenous communities, as you've said in the course, are the first astronomers. And so I think actually astronomy is in many ways a natural fit with many indigenous communities. Of course, we say indigenous communities, and they're so different all around the world, or even within Absolutely, Australia. Yeah. But um, whereas you know, a coal mine is a, or setting off atomic bombs is a much more difficult thing. Mm. So I think as long as astronomers respect the indigenous knowledge and expertise, and hopefully we're developing more indigenous astronomers who can actually take lead on the thing. So it actually, instead of some non-indigenous person like me coming in and saying, we want to put an observatory there, it can be someone like you saying, uh, we can enhance our connection with culture by yeah. doing something like this. Yeah. So I think astronomy is, of all the uses of indigenous land, is one of the ones that can maybe work best yeah. respectfully with the cultures, yeah. unlike putting to make bombs on it, for example. Yeah, a lot less destructive at the very least. Okay, well, thank you very much, Paul.